Can taking progesterone make me infertile? So let's kind of clarify first what someone means by progesterone because there's two large classes. So when we talk about progesterone as far as what your ovary releases um, post ovulation, that's P4. So that's the, you know, the actual compound that is progesterone that's made from the ovary post ovulation. The other class is called the progestins. And the progestins are kind of what you think about when you read about progesterone in the Women's Health Initiative or, or kind of a lot of studies that use progesterone as a broad categorical term. So progestins are progesterone-like, but they're also testosterone-like, and they have kind of receptor promiscuity across the board to hit cortisone receptors and androgen receptors, progesterone receptors, mineral corticoid receptors, and so they're really kind of broad, and that's why there's so many different ones that you might have explored with birth control um, of different variants. So will progesterone make you infertile? So if it's a progestin, like they're using for birth control, obviously it's going to inhibit some of the uterine proliferation and prevent the gonadotropins from being released to ovulate. Um, so in that sense, yes, it will prevent you from getting pregnant, which is why it's birth control. Progesterone, on the other hand, can be used at various points in the cycle to promote fertility and to actually be used to enhance implantation and make sure that there's less of a chance of miscarriage and um, other gestational issues. So it really depends on, again, who's asking for what reason and what kind of compound that they're using. What does HRT look like while being pregnant? Well, usually if you are pregnant, that's kind of the hormonal milieu that's aimed for in some sense for hormone replacement, especially post-menopause. So again, like, you know, progesterone level is going to be sky high, estrogen levels are going to be sky high, and, and again, you really want to mess with that environment if you're aiming to having the baby. So no, no HRT during pregnancy outside of progesterone for that first trimester. As a female, at what age would my fertility take the highest impact? So generally speaking, it's kind of the second half of the 30s. So that's where, I mean, number one, getting blood work to make sure that you have an antral, an antral follicle count using um, AMH or testing what's called inhibin B at certain points in the cycle to kind of evaluate follicular uh, amounts. Uh, that would kind of be the best way to really put yourself in the category of borderline uh, infertility or you know there's plenty of women in their 40s that have a child so it's not out of the question per se but you know as you accrue years you do accrue um, damage in the actual oocytes and the ability to take those primordial follicles through the whole follicular maturation process so you know the the likelihood of genetic abnormalities do increase with age um, as the number of eggs and oocytes actually decrease with age at the same time as a male what age Am I impacted the most with my fertility? Mm, I mean, in this day and age, really, it's starting to get younger and younger. So the best scenario is just to get a semen analysis and kind of see where you stand. Um, looking at motility, quantity, you know, the amount of seminal fluid that you've got as far as the actual ability to kind of climb the, the uterine wall. And then the um, morphology, motility, and total count. So when you look at that, you can actually, you know, see where you stand as far as fertility goes with the main part of it. Now, obviously, testosterone is going to have a role to play and um, actual libido and drive to go and, and successfully reproduce. So those are different factors to kind of come into play. But essentially, more of the problem comes in when those three parameters of the semen come into question. So using tools to improve morphology, motility, and the total number is kind of where the game is with, with males. Now again, the ability for males to reproduce later on in life is not generally impacted by their age as much, especially in, in terms of uh, male-female differences. Um, but, you know, there, there are accrued damages that happen over someone's life as far as just DNA damage and, you know, UV exposure, the different parameters that can impact testicular function across the board too, just like, you know, having your laptop on your lap and cell phone close to your pocket. So. Definitely things to consider from that regard, but um, yeah. Does obesity impact fertility? Yes, so it's not obesity really per se, but the metabolic consequences that usually um, go hand in hand with obesity. So things like inflammation and you know more oxidative stress, and you know obviously the the gravity of carrying the weight with pain and 
it can really throw off the hormonal milieu imbalance with females and the, their ability to ovulate in general too. And then on the male side of things, obviously the more overweight or visceral fat you have, that's gonna mess up the, the delicate balance with estrogen and testosterone. And then obviously when you're not able to move as much, you're not gonna make as much testosterone, you're also more likely to see yourself in a negative light as far as where you are in a hierarchy. So that's gonna feed back on testosterone production. So overall, you know, again, it's not overweight that is the problem from a gravitational perspective, but it is the metabolic consequences that ride along with obesity as a health condition that impact fertility. Will being a vegan affect my fertility? Yes, so again, it's not the dietary dogma that will do it as much as just what you're able to kind of consume. Um, so, you know, there's plenty of vegans and vegetarians that can get pregnant, but the likelihood that they're going to have to supplement a lot more as far as amino acids and, and protein sources and omega-3 fatty acids, um, even B12 and folate, which they're probably already taking anyway. Um, but there's just a lot more things to consider as far as maintenance of appropriate body fat concentration with women in particular to make sure that they're still ovulating um, and then as well as having enough nutrients to actually support a pregnancy um, on those kinds of restrictive diets. Will being on testosterone help someone who has fertility issues? Um, if they have low testosterone and they're infertile or if they have issues with sperm production then yes um, but it's a it's, it's a really nuanced picture. So really testosterone will help a hypogonadic male in the first four to six weeks. Um, but as you get testosterone concentrations higher to improve fertility, eventually you're gonna get a negative feedback loop to shut down or at least greatly reduce your own testicular production. So in that sense, you're gonna get less quantity, you're gonna get less quality. Um, that's where the morphology and stuff might change. So if someone is hypogonadic and still m wanting to maintain fertility, then what they would do is more likely figure out, is it testicular failure? Is it um, hypothalamic issues as far as the actual gonadotropin release? And go about it a different way of using either something upstream like enclomiphene or downstream like HCG rather than straight um, testosterone. Do anabolic steroids make you infertile? Um, it's a super wide class of agents, so some of them definitely will. Um, others that can be used kind of at a lower dose. Um, I have not seen um, feedback negatively on the HP axis, so they still make LH and FSH, their testicles are still producing um, normal ejaculate volumes and, and semen morphology, so, or sperm morphology, so I don't, I wouldn't say across the board they will, but it's, it's super nuanced, and I would say if you're really going for fertility, I wouldn't risk it.